I'll do a short, short presentation. So this is the plan for the workshop. This slide, are, this slide deck is already available um, on the um, on Teams. Okay, if you want to, I can send it by email. So this is just the the the, the program. I did some slides. I was testing this uh, last Friday, and I did some slight tweaks. It's maybe there's no time to go through all, all the stuff, but I I guess I tried to pick up the most varied. Uh, uh, diverse stuff I could think about for introductory level. And don't worry about the, the exercises. If you cannot keep um, keep up typing, just relax, enjoy it. See the typing because everything is already pre-typed. Uh, I know myself, maybe I will I, maybe I'll take some detours. This is common, but don't worry. If I, I'll save everything and I'll share it with you either way. So a quick introduction. So I'm a, a professor of uh, uh, typography, web design uh, at uh, FBALP. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a programmer. I'm a self-taught programmer. So I've been using uh, processing for ever since I finished school. So this was probably my first online work. It's kind of ugly, but I kind of like it. Uh, it's like a small monster. I did it with my wife. So I'm I'm a researcher at Ido Isades, the Research Institute of Universidad de Porto, University of Porto, and I'm driven by typography. So I'm country de delegate for of Aitaipai and uh, a, a member of Atipu for Portugal. And everything I do in typography, I, I, it's related somehow uh, in my activity is related somehow to typography. So we live in Porto, in Portugal. This is the, on the tip of of Europe. And yeah, we're mainly known by our wines and stuff like this. So our city is beautiful. Whenever this passes, please drop by and, and say hello. Our school is was is actually somewhere in this direction over here. So you can actually see that this is the, the point of view. So we're actually seeing this point of view from, I think, and the school is here, downtown Porto. We have a, a few campuses in downtown Porto in the University of, of Porto. And we have some connections with other schools. <clears throat> I can mention the University of Aveiro. We have a research and development uh, unit that works with them, also with IPCA up north. And we have some degrees, shared degrees with the FIUP. If you're interested in engineering and stuff like this, uh, just go. Our school is a really cool old 19th century palace, um, and it's located downtown. And it, this is the main building you're seeing. And of course, we're a fine art school, so we have a lot of wood, uh, stone, uh, painting, uh, but we also have design, graphic design. This is the future expansion that's going on. And in the middle, we have a really, really, really cool, luscious, romantic garden. So this is the, one of the perks of being downtown. It's maybe the only perk of being downtown, um, but it's really cool. So this is our research unit. Uh, unit. Just drop by and say hello. And we've been organizing in the research unit uh, events like this, like processing community day, like video games, uh, conferences, mainly academic stuff, and some workshops. This is a type design workshop. So we do a lot of stuff. This is some work of the students. So I'm mainly teaching graphic design, web design, typography, and we do some some creative coding also. So this is a work. This this is work from students, from second year students. So this is a simple circle packing algorithm going on. And yeah, well, we've already talked a bit. Maybe Sylvia and Rita want to share. And I'm sorry, I don't know your name. You're just here as a low guest. Um, if anyone wants to say anything about about what you're doing, I guess we we did this already. But if anyone wants to share a bit more, we have a minute or two to do this. Or if people are shy, I talk a lot, so feel free to interrupt. Okay. I guess people are shy. I don't know if it's me, but I only see half of your screen, Pedro. Yeah, well, it's Teams. Teams does this uh, motion tracking sometimes. Yeah, and does does this crazy stuff. Uh, I'm Yu Ying, a recent graduate from the USA, minoring in creative coding and learning P5. Great. Nice to see, see your chat here, you. Uh, great to have USA uh, visitors also. Just need to get the door. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's let's keep on because we have short time. So let's do a bit of conceptual reference for this. When when thinking about this workshop, um, I do this exercise with the students where we we code an image. And uh, when thinking about this workshop, we, I was thinking the best way to to introduce introduce people to to the concepts. But at the same time, I wanted to do something fun. So. 
I've been working with this kind of stuff. I can actually, I can actually show you a prototype here. Uh, this is, was not very well planned. Um, I'm uh, working with this kind of patterns. I'm, I'm interested in printing uh, this kind of pattern. So I'm, I'm actually building uh, 3D printing this kind of stuff. So if you, you know your your traditional typography, this is a replica of a, of a, of a, um, a bridge slug, lead type slug. So I'm interested in this kind of, of patterns to print. And um, I've discovered that these, these are called truche patterns. So if you if you actually use a square with a pattern, you can actually rotate the square um, and combine them to create se several interesting patterns. Like uh, uh, Sebastian Truche was a fa uh, was a priest from the 1700s, and he actually print, uh, 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 yeah edited the book. Like he said, a method to to make an infinite uh, amount of different drawings, like like nothing other than grandiose, an infinite amount. So this is pretty cool because he only used four modules, or like we'll be using just one, and then you rotate it. So what he did was create interesting variations. He discovered by mathematical combinations that he could create interesting combinations of patterns. And this has been a recurrent theme throughout the arts and throughout the, the pattern design and rug making also. Like this, I think this this link, this is a guy who makes rugs, who discovered the truche pattern, the tiles. And if you actually use one, two, three, four tiles, or one drawing rotated in four directions, one without and one full, you can actually create interesting patterns. And you say, okay, a triangle is not very fun, but this is the concept. You don't really need to use a triangle. You can use an arch or you can use um, a blob and you can create this kind of stuff. For example, this is just one pattern. This is the guy from the rugs where he creates symbolic uh, keys. And with these keys, with the same pattern, with the same tile, he creates really cool patterns. So this is a principle of, of the of the of the approach. These are truche tile patterns. So this is the, the first thing will be I want you to think about. And throughout the day today, after the after the first session, I want you to think about one tile, just to think about the, the shape you want to draw in one or more tiles. And the idea to get uh, to get you started thinking, although this is a bit early, I know, but just to get you start, started thinking is we're going to have a tile. So the tile is a square. And I want you to think about this square as an abstract dimension. So I want you to think about this square as going from zero to 100. So if you think about it, it's like percentage. So if it goes all the way from zero to 100, so you can apply 100% of, for example, uh, uh, 10 centimeters, like a mobile phone, or you can apply zero to 100% of, of one inch or zero to 100% of a building size. So if if you're using, if you're expressing this tile in percentage-based units, you can scale it to whatever you, uh, measurement you want to use. But I want you to think about another trick. Usually in graphic design or or maybe in architecture, I guess I don't know. Uh, we're used to think about the corner, the bottom corner or the top corner, as your zero zero, as your starting unit. So I want you to think about it differently. I want you to think about it from the center. I want you to think about a measurement that goes negative to the left and positive to the right. So for example, if we have an arch here, this arch goes from minus 50% to zero, uh, uh, sorry, minus 50 to zero, and then from zero to minus 50. So actually this is minus 50, zero and zero minus 50. So it goes from neg uh, negative x, zero y to zero x, negative y. And you can express any shape like this. For example, this one, uh, minus th 33, 33, plus 5, plus 3, plus 3, plus 5, etc. Right? You can express your measurements like this. And then, you, yeah, and then we're going to tile them. Okay, so this is the first idea I want you to hold on to. And uh, actually, there's another cool book that I don't really have here. I don't know where it is, but there's this guy. There's a whole field of mathematics that I discovered uh, recently called optimization art. The guys from mathematics are really freaks and they do this kind of stuff. And there's this guy who who does this modified truche tiles. He just says, OK, I have a tile, a triangle. That's the thing we're going to be doing first. 
And if the center point goes percentage percentage based percentage wise on either direction, I can express a blacker or lighter, a darker or lighter square. So this is the the trick we're, we're going to be doing. And of course, if you're if you have already have done tiles in the in the past, you know that things have to connect to specific points. So if you touch this point here, you better prepare to touch it here or touch it there. Otherwise, it won't connect. Okay. So you, I want you to think modeler. And this is what some uh, Portuguese authors and many international authors have already done in the in the past. I really love this picture uh, from Antonio Quadros Ferreira. It's a Portuguese visual artist. He, he was actually a professor in our school, one of the first generation graphic design teachers. Um, and he did this this crazy compositions using Truchet tiles also. It's called Sequencia de Vaz, uh, base sequence uh, from 73. So this has been reinterpreted a lot in the past. We did a, a, a research project on, on these guys, uh, if you want to know more, if you want to go to Wisdom Transfer, Transfer website. And the last time we did this workshop, we reinterpreted his work. And this this is a couple of examples that came out of exactly this workshop, okay? So yeah, I think you can create some kind of interesting stuff. But one of the artists that amazes me more is uh, Maria Kyle. So Maria Kyle was actually a, a visual artist and well, she was a graphic designer also because she made some posters and some illustrations. Um, and she did this really, really cool, I'm really envious of our Lisbon friends because they really they have this art all around the city and in subway stations. And they have this some of the, her tiles uh, laying around the city. And what really amazes me is like these modernist compositions. These are really, really cool. I really find this, uh, I fell in love with, with them when I saw them. Uh, so I'm going after this kind of feeling. So the idea is going after this. Uh, so kind of trusset tiles, kind of com color compositions, kind of uh, overlays or multiplying effects. And yeah, and of course, there's a lot of other artists like Karel Martins. Um, he's a really Dutch graphic designer. I really urge you to, to know his work. Or a few colleagues like uh, Ricardo Dantas and Fabio Duarte Martins from Item Zero. This is actually a, a detail from a work I haven't seen published yet, but it's a pattern uh, where he prints out some images. So it's the same. It's the same trick without the tiling, or for example, this kind of trick that Fab is doing, uh, in doing a gradient, but instead of doing half toning, he's actually producing a, a 1900 technique called mezzotinting. So he produces random octagons and then like silver flakes and then spreads them out on the page. So we'll be doing the same technique, but with different um, things. So finally, let's go into processing. So if you know processing, uh, almost every one of you <clears throat> said you know processing already. So processing uh, is a, an open source initiative uh, run by the Processing Foundation. It all started with uh, John Maida back in the 90s, in the, in the end of the 90s. And I, I, yesterday I was doing this, this I, I don't know if you're seeing the, the arrows, but I just wanted to show you the, the variety of the ecosystem of processing. So this all amounts back to the 60s with the ideas of starting to, to teach normal people, normal, <laughs> normal people to program. And John Maida created a program that was called Design by Numbers to teach artists, artists to, to program in the MIT Media Lab. And a couple of his students started the Statics Computation Group and created processing. So processing borrowed a lot of ideas, but a lot of people have been drawing ideas from processing also. And um, I, I, I've highlighted a, a couple of them that have been mentioned here also, like um, Open Frameworks, no one, no one mentioned this, but Open Frameworks was a, a colleague of them, uh, Zach Lieberman, who created a version for C++. And Arduino was a thing that took advantage of an open source physical computing board and applied the same concepts, the same language, but ported it to C to run on small physical computers. And eventually, um, processing found its way to the web environment. Actually, the, the way they do it, they did it was publishing Java applets, but then they found out that using JavaScript was uh, better. So they created the P5. There's a really cool library also known, uh, called basil.js. That's um, the co-creator is Benedict Gross. There's a book from this guy about p5.js. This is a really cool library to use in InDesign. If, you're, if you like editorial design, you should really look into this because the main thing about processing, I have this discussion many times with people, uh, what's the, the easiest language to learn? I don't, I'm not a programmer, so I don't know many languages. I, I kind of read, I kind of read PHP, I kind of read Python. Uh, yeah, uh, but I don't know many languages. 
but what I found out uh, during my cor during my course is that learning processing unlocked me the the rest of the languages. So it allowed me to understand the rest of the languages. So I think this is a perfect way to start because, yeah, the jump to JavaScript is really easy. The jump to Arduino is easy. well, apart from the electricity part because I think it's magic. Um, the jump to Arduino is, is was easy. The jump to open frameworks, apart some details, were, were was really easy. So I think this is gives you a better understanding of what's happening in other languages. So this, this I kind of left this here because I think this is is a bunch of cool tools for graphic designers to be aware of. Uh, and of course, I think that we're moving in this direction. So if you're starting, I should urge you to start here and go like in this direction. <laughs> um, and yeah, as it, well, this something happened here. Um, why should I learn to code? I, I really don't like to answer this question because I like others to answer it for, for us. So Nicholas Felton is a guy who uses data and software to, to design his stuff. Um, so yeah, just look at his work and he does identities, he does uh, publications and uh, actually a bit of shameless promotion about our keynote speaker, Karsten Schmidt. He also does really, really cool stuff. Um, so he'll be speaking next week. Um, and yeah. So I, I think I've talked too much. Um, I think we should just get going. Just a quick run through what, what we're going to, to see to, um, in these two days. So we'll start drawing primitives. We'll just do a small face and then we'll go to variables. We'll, we'll just draw a small uh, ISO, ISO pictograph uh, variable size and then go into function and parameters. We'll draw several things of the same, of the same um, object with the uh, customized parameters. We'll go into conditions, either to the left red, either to the right, something else. Uh, and then we'll go through loops. Loops allow us to draw one, five, or multiple times with different, yeah, uh, settings, or just a bunch of them, or just a bunch of them with conditions, like the third and the fifth are red. And, and then in the second day, we'll just do a quick recap and go through text and images. We'll do the, if you're, if you paid attention, we we were doing a grid of Lego heads, and the the grid is actually here. And then we'll do some text. We'll add some text to this, and we'll load some images. It, this is not a drawing, but it it, it could be the drawing. Uh, and just for fun, we'll connect a webcam to see how easy it is to connect a webcam. And we'll start using arrays. I kind of forgot what this was. Ah, this was to get the drawing going on. And yeah, we'll export the result. So this is a really easy to get this kind of drawing going on and i think it's a bit rough i don't want to be a maria kyle imitator impersonator but i get it almost gets it almost gets a feeling and i just added a bit of of uh, misregistration just to get this kind of feeling of not tiling very well uh, and yeah don't worry the exercises are all online uh, the link is on team so just go there and see it we'll be using team uh, the reference a lot uh, because I don't know this stuff by heart. And if you want a really cool book, the, the Benedict Gross, like the guy I told you about, this is the best and most beautiful book you can actually have. Um, and it's the original version was for, for processing and he rewrote it for p5.js. So this is, I urge you to get this one. It's either in paper or in, in, in EPUB. And of course, if you want to learn processing, you really have to know Daniel Shipman. So this is the, the guru from processing. So he has everything online in video and he's a really, really cool guy to see his, his videos. So yeah, we're on time. Perfect. Let's start coding. So without further ado, just uh, go to processing uh, p5 uh, p5js.org, the website. I'll just drop it in here. Oh, Google Maria Kyle now. Super cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm actually I want to I want to buy her book also, uh, when I go downtown to the, to the National Printing House store uh, because I also don't have any any printed works from her here. Just just head on to p5js.org and on p5js.org you have everything about the 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 this the the origin of p5. You can actually download it or you can use the editor. Um, 